the Marathon Kevlar Mesh Riding Suit from Motoport, some of the most versatile adventure gear out there. In this video, I'm going to make the case that it just may be. Or at least I'll share my perspective on why I choose this setup. And then I also want to do a brief comparison to the Climb Baja S4, which, as far as I can tell, is the closest mass market competitor to this jacket. So first, a little bit about Motoport. They're a pretty small brand located in uh, San Diego, California. They have a showroom there and they do the sewing right in the back. So, you know, truly made in the USA. And they've been around since about 1965. And what they specialize in is working with these really high-end Kevlar mesh and Kevlar stretch fabrics. And they make all their gear completely to spec, incorporating about a dozen really detailed body measurements. And they allow you to customize just about everything, including things like pockets, fasteners, reflective, um, armor configuration, and really, you know, just about anything you can imagine. And if it's not on their menu on their website, just give them a call and they will probably do it for you. The other nice thing is um, if they don't get it right and it doesn't fit exactly how you want it, they will do alterations for free until they get it exactly how you want it. And I've actually availed myself of that service a few times and they've just been, you know, really great about it. So with all the big name brands out there, why do I think Motoport is the best option? Well, first, let me define what best means to me. The first thing I look for is protection. Motorcycling is an inherently dangerous activity, even more so with adventure motorcycling. And so I want all the protection I can get. And because most adventure trips will include at least some on-road miles, I want gear that's going to withstand the worst case scenario, a high speed on pavement get off. After protection, the next most important feature is versatility in terms of the range of conditions um, that the gear will be comfortable to ride in. No matter how good and breathable the new, you know, high-end uh, waterproof materials like Gore-Tex are, if you have an integrated waterproof liner and you're riding slow and it's hot out, it's just going to be brutal. Most suits try to address this by putting in more and more zippered vents and bigger zippered vents. And vents are great if you're moving fast enough to get airflow through them. Um, but if you're moving really slow, or maybe you're off the bike, you're walking around exploring, then you don't get that airflow and then no amount of venting is ever going to compete with an all-around mesh suit like this. The ideal setup, in my opinion, would be a uh, mesh suit accompanied by some uh, waterproof liners that you could put on when it starts raining or when it starts, you know, getting a little bit cooler. The problem is that most of the mesh riding gear out there is just really not going to be up to the task of surviving a high-speed pavement slide. Um, as far as I can tell based on my research, the beefiest mesh jacket out there is this uh, Climb Baja S4. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But even this jacket, Climb positions it in their advertising material as a really great hot weather off-road touring jacket, which suggests even they know that this jacket is probably not up to the task of surviving an on-road crash. So in comes the Motoport Air Mesh suit. It's made out of large panels of DuPont Kevlar mesh material that is supposed to have roughly 10 times the abrasion resistance of competition grade leather. What I can tell you is when I just run my hand over this jacket, it feels incredibly tough, like chain mail. In fact, when I go on long rides for multiple days and I'm in and out of the um, cargo pockets on the pants, which are unlined for some reason, um, unless you ask them to add a liner, uh, the material ends up chewing up the skin and my knuckles and my fingertips. That's how, that's how tough it is. Um, so pro tip, if you do order this gear, um, when you place your order, ask them to put a liner in the cargo pockets um, because standard, they for some reason don't, even though they do have liners in the jacket. It's just, it's really hard to convey on video just how beefy and robust this material is. And again, comparing to the Climb Baja S4, it's got a pretty nice rugged shoulder Dynatec mesh material here, several panels of it. It's about 50% of the total jacket surface area. The rest um, is a Cordura. So what that means is you're not going to have quite the same level of airflow as the Motoport, which is 100% mesh almost. Um, and the Cordura part of the chassis is not going to be as abrasion resistant. Now, there are a couple of patches, I should say, of super fabric on the shoulders and on the elbows. And there, I think, you know, that's a very tough material and the jacket probably will be even more abrasion resistant than the Motoport in those spots. But overall, um, the Motoport is clearly going to be the tougher garment. The other thing that I think is really important to point out is that the Kevlar material in the Motoport jacket doesn't contain any nylons or plastic polymers. And that's kind of unique because almost all textile materials and riding suits out there um, do contain these materials. In fact, the Scholar Dynatec mesh on the Baja is a nylon-based mesh. 
The problem with that is that um, these materials tend to melt when they're exposed to the incredibly high temperatures that can be generated in a high-speed slide. And if they melt, they can burn. Um, so really, it's ideal to stay away from these kinds of materials if you can at all help it. And then finally, of course, it doesn't matter how good the material is if uh, the seams fail. And so that's why I really like the fact that all the critical seams on uh, this jacket and pants are either double or triple stitched with Kevlar thread to make sure everything is really well tied together. So in terms of slide protection, I don't think there's anything else like this in the mesh world. And you can see a lot of crash reports and testimonials out there on the web talking about how well people have survived um, pretty bad crashes in this gear. Now, if you do crash in this gear and it's damaged to such an extent that it would cost more than half the price of a new one to replace it, they will just give you a new one, which is, I think, pretty incredible. And that's on top of their standard seven-year general warranty for any defects in material or workmanship. Of course, the other element of protection is the armor. The armor in this jacket is not CE rated. On their website, Motoport goes on and on about, you know, all the flaws in the CE testing system and how it can lead to materials that are actually sub-optimized in terms of crash protection. I don't know about any of that. I think they didn't want to shell out the money to pay for the CE certification, which can be pretty expensive. They do have two levels of armor. So the base is the tri-armor, and then you can upgrade to the quad armor, which is what I have in this suit. As the name implies, the quad armor adds one additional layer, and it's supposed to reduce uh, the impact force transmission by about 50%. I have crashed a whole bunch in this suit off-road um, at fairly modest speeds. And in those conditions, I will say that the performance is excellent. There's virtually no force transmission, even when I've crashed in some pretty rocky patches. Luckily, I've never had to test this gear in a high-speed crash. But again, you can look up some crash reports on the internet. Uh, with people that have had that experience, unfortunately, but have walked away from it. What I can speak to firsthand is the coverage, which is really unbelievable. Um, in the arms, for example, it's not elbows and shoulders. The entire arm is covered with um, armor. Very substantial chest protection, including rib coverage and a large back protector. And when you compare this to what's in the climb, for example, well, I think the difference speaks for itself. It's a similar story in the pants where you basically have uninterrupted coverage from waist to lower shin. Now, what's really important is that every piece of armor is fretted for airflow and it does flow air quite well. That's important because with this much coverage, if it didn't flow air, um, it would sort of defeat the advantage of the mesh. The other really important thing to point out is that because this gear is tailor-made for you, the armor sits exactly where it needs to sit and it doesn't move out of the way. And that's critical because you know, no matter how good the armor material is, if it shifts at the critical moment, then it doesn't do you any good. So that covers protection. Now, what about versatility? Well, I think for hot weather gear, um, there's just no competition for this setup. I mean, it's one giant air mesh panel. It flows air like crazy. And no amount of venting is going to be able to compete with that. I do know that a lot of people have started wearing sort of integrated armor compression shirts with just a jersey over the top. And I did try that out to compare with the mesh, and I'll say I didn't notice any appreciable difference. And of course, the downside of a setup like that is if you're doing a lot of going from pavement to dirt, from pavement to dirt many times over the course of a day, then you may need to put on your uh, abrasion-resistant jacket layer, take it off, put it back on, take it off, um, so that you can have protection when you're on the pavement. And with this setup, you don't have to do that at all. So that's hot weather. Um, as the temperatures start to drop, usually around 60 degrees at freeway speeds, I'm going to need to pop in this um, windstop waterproof liner. And that'll keep me comfortable down into the 50s. And at that point, they do sell uh, an insulated liner also to go with the jacket. But um, really, at that point, I'm just going to put on my heated jacket and uh, run that. The, uh, the liner can be uh, sort of snapped into the jacket but I prefer just to wear it loose because it makes it easier to take on and off. I will say that the waterproofing on the liner is excellent. I have uh, ridden in you know, six hours of nonstop rain and been completely dry. The one downside is that the exterior part of the jacket will get wet. And so when you roll into you know, camp or at your hotel, you will have a wet jacket to deal with, um, which can be a little bit an, an annoyance. Um, I personally don't think it's a big deal. Um, also, if you have even 10 minutes between when the rain stops and when you arrive, 
um, the jacket will already be dry because that Kevlar mesh dries really, really quickly. And then, of course, if you really are concerned about this, then they'll be happy to make you an exterior liner that will go over the top of the jacket. Um, and in fact, that's what I did for the pants because it's a lot more practical to just have uh, pullovers for the pants than to you know, take the pants off, put in a liner, put them back on. So I think this system is really versatile. Like I said, for hot weather riding, it can't be beat. And then when I layer up and um, I have the jacket, this liner and a heated jacket, I can ride down into the low 30s at freeway speeds uh, very comfortably. Speaking of the pants, this is an over pant type setup. I usually run it with a pair of thin textile hiking pants. Works great. Um, and I got this because I sort of thought, well, you know, when I'll be, you know, showing up at a town or wanting to go around hiking or exploring, um, I could take this off and just be wearing normal pants underneath. But in practice, it is a little bit cumbersome to take off the boots and the pants, leave them on the bike, put them back on. Um, and so I think, well, unquestionably, I would recommend the jacket and get it again. Um, for the pants, you know, next time I might consider just a kind of a lower profile adventure pant rather than an over pant. Maybe something like the pant piece of the uh, Klein Baja S4 or something like that. Well, there you have it. So far in all my research, I have yet to find a better option in terms of safety and versatility than the Motoport Kevlar Mesh Riding Suit. Now, I am always on the lookout for something better, so if you have any suggestions, just drop them in the comments. And I hope this video was helpful to any of you that are considering purchasing this suit because I know it is quite an investment. If it was helpful, I hope you'll consider liking or subscribing, and I hope you'll check out some of the uh, writing documentaries on the channel. Thanks for watching. See you next time.